Final question, is there anything that you may want to confess tonight before you go in? I keep everything right here. There you go. Or right here. There you go. There you go. That's how you do it, right? Y'all yeah. have an amazing... There comes a time in every woman's life when you're considering flirting a little bit with that male boss you know is attracted to you so that maybe you could get ahead in life, make some more money or advance your career. It's just harmless flirting, you think. If I can use my sex appeal just right, I won't have to sleep with him. I'll just be close enough to get that deal. <laughs> when this time comes, dear lady, don't do it. It's not worth it. It's not going to go the way you plan. Find another way to advance your career or financial situation or quit entirely. But don't do it. Unfortunately, quit entirely is easier said than done. So when you do go ahead and flirt harmlessly, you will come to find out sooner rather than later that yes, you will have to sleep with him. And yes, once you start receiving all that good old male security that feeds your hypergamy, you will want more. And yes, you will probably date him. And if you don't, you will use that same sex appeal with other men so that your sweet security can continue. And one day, you will wake up and realize you're just a glorified pro. What's more, you're in too deep. You sold your body and soul all these years to obtain material things. If you're lucky, you will now be a husband who in your 30s, trying to keep up with the rise of the new younger hoes by proxy. And if you're lucky, you end up with a diddy and suffer much abuse in silence for many years, a hell you may never get out of. After the release of that video, everyone is talking about diddy, but let's talk about Cassie. Before we get into it though, hit subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss another episode of a Nigerian take with Dio. And I can't express enough how important it is to share this video to the young females in your life. Remember to give it a thumbs up as well. The truly abusive nature of Didi has been getting exposed over the past few months and CNN and the rest of the left-leaning media, especially in cases like these, are usually pretty eager to tag the victim as brave and strong and other words of admiration. They pretty much run this never question the victim template. But you see, I do question the victim, you see, because it is unproductive to not question victimhood. Think about it this way. Imagine if doctors in the past didn't cut people who had died of diseases open to find out how it killed them. How would they have found the cures that save so many lives today? Yes, yes, the victim has been through a lot already and emotions of sympathy are running high. You don't want to be tagged a victim blamer for asking them stuff like, um, how the f did you end up in that situation in the first place? Unlike these media outlets and frankly most people that lead with sympathy rather than the tact to save others, I believe that situations like Cassie's, however unfortunate, present a great opportunity to understand and prevent other women, as many that are willing to learn from the mistakes of others, from becoming her. So I looked into Cassie. There's not a lot of information out there about her, but let's see if we can make sense of what is. Her parents got divorced when she was really young, so she had to shuttle between her mom's home in Connecticut and her dad's in California. That's a two days drive and five hours flight, by the way. How the heck would a child manage to actually shuttle between this long distance? Now, judging by the fact that she completed her secondary school education in Williams, a school located in Connecticut, I'm going to go out on a whim here and say the parents living in Connecticut, her mom, raised her. And she very likely hardly ever saw her father. So yeah, she grew up with a single mom, no dad. First red flag. Cassie then moved to New York where she met Ryan Leslie, her first record label boss. Leslie Ryan was 26 years old at the time, but he of course proceeded to date Cassie while pushing her music career. Or to better word it, this is about Cassie after all. Cassie is now dating a man who is nine years older than her well connected in the industry and looking poised to help her advance her career. He's writing her songs, 
connecting her with his peers in the industry and he even gets her a deal with none other than Puff Daddy, that you now know as Diddy, the boss of one of the biggest labels at the time, Bad Boys Records. Puff Daddy, in collaboration with Leslie Ryan, released her first studio album in 2006. Fast forward to 2007, Cassie is now 19 years old, just one year after Ryan Leslie got her into the Bad Boys circle. She is now attracted to a new Oga, Puff Daddy, who is clearly more powerful than Ryan Leslie. Surely he has more to offer her career. So yes, she and Ryan Leslie break things off and almost immediately after, boom, she's dating Diddy, another powerful man who is 18 years older than her. This is also a man who already had three baby mamas at the time, one of which was the late Kim Porter, who he was in a serious long-term on and off relationship with for over 15 years, but still cheated on that woman and impregnated another woman in 2006, literally a year before Cassie decided it was a good idea to enter into a relationship with this man. What was the attraction? His great track record with women? Beats me. Or something else, something more poignant that stems from a deep lack of self-worth. Nigerians would say in pidgin, a wolf de podge belle, that translates directly to a meal you got cheaply will give you a runny stomach, which means beware of freebies. I don't know Cassie, personally, and this video is largely speculation based on the facts we do have on her, but based on past behaviours of women just like her from divorce slash fatherless or partly fathered homes, which is something prevalent in the black community might I add, I would say there are two possible scenarios here. One, she was a lost, naive young girl with no proper guidance, thrown into a space she was not yet ready for, and she just kept going, genuinely loving these men. However, due to a rocky childhood and a lack of a present father, she really couldn't tell what a good man should be. So she had to figure that out the hard way by entering the ultimate trap, an abusive relationship. Or... She's a hypergamous woman. Her always dating her bosses, specifically at a time when they are boosting her career, establishes a pattern of attraction to power and status. What's funny is the two scenarios aren't all that different. You could be subconsciously hypergamous and convince yourself that the feelings you have have nothing to do with the material. I found this really good article online about female hypergamy from a site called Manning Up Smart. To my surprise, it was pretty balanced. A lot of the stuff out there on hypergamy is either from a disgruntled feminist perspective who just wants to use buzzwords like patriarchy and, you know, gratify their own feelings, or from the extreme alpha bro types trying to excuse men cheating. So shout out to Manning of Smart for this balanced, non-toxic article. Sock, Sok Socrates, that is the writer, explains that while hypergamy is actually a biological trait that exists in women that can further be flamed by societal norms, it contrasts sharply with a woman's much healthier social desires for a compatible, loving, and supporting mate. So basically, the hypergamy in a woman is attracted to three things in men. Sexual dimorphism, that's the height, size, fitness of a man. Social dimorphism, that's his ability to be dominant and take charge. You know, that confidence in a man that truly makes a woman drip. And finally, status dimorphism, which is his fame and power and, well, status. That same hypergamy in a woman is willing to have her subject herself to disrepute by going after an already taken man or a man she might already know deep down is toxic, aka Tyrone, aka the bad boys, aka Diddy, in Cassie's case, just because she perceives these traits in him. The writer goes on to say, and I love this part, that even if hypergamy is biological, it can and should be controlled just as men control their biological attraction to polygamy. Now, in the case of Cassie and Didi, she probably knew about the three baby mamas, yet she went on to date a man with such giant red flags, arguably for protection, status, security, and all the other good stuff. She has not claimed to be forced into any relationship, 
So this is probably true. Some of you might say she was young and there was a power dynamic. I absolutely agree. You would be describing exactly what I have just described about female hypergamy. Yet some women walk away from such situation and don't date such men. Fast forward to 2023, there's a lawsuit. And in 2024, a video of her suffering. That is the price of not controlling your hypergamy. Cassie has paid that price for many years of her life and learned the hard way. Choices do have consequences. And if you choose hypergamy over your mental well-being because of some career, <laughs> you will come to find out why selling your soul to the devil is not worth it. All that abuse, for what? One album that didn't even make it to number one on the charts, on any charts? <sighs> it's not enough to recognize Didi as the devil, as there will always be a devil. We must do one better and ask Cassie and people like her, how did you get in bed with the devil? What choices were made? All this starts at home. Hypergamy is much easier to control when you have two parents that raise you together in love and show you what a good relationship looks like, thereby building your self-worth. You stand a way better chance than ladies like Cassie who have to figure it out. Although I should note that two parents is no guarantee, so it would be fantastic if we actually start intentionally making the girl kid aware of their possible innate hypergamy and how it can be dealt with, rather than leaving that teaching to the Tyrones, Chads and Didis of this world. Didi now has seven children, with more and more young ladies throwing themselves at his feet and still fighting over him. Never matter that he already has several baby mamas before them and he has in fact been accused of abuse. <sighs> It really does break my heart to see ladies treat themselves so cheaply, but what can I do about it? Nothing. Nothing but what I am already doing right now in talking to you. My name is Theo. Thank you for watching. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me on this video. Like I always say, I might be completely off the mark, so if you agree, you disagree, leave a comment below and I will see you soon. Odabu.